Hello, this is me, I'm Dino. I'm joining the Foxborough Art and um, Foxborough Art Association at uh, Patriots Place and the Foxborough Community Television here and gonna bring to you guys the wonders of doodling. One of my favorite things to do on the planet is draw. I recently just finished a drawing where I drew over 70 hours in a week to get a map of Florida made of animals done. I love drawing and these are my tools. They say the pen is mightier than the sword. These are the best weapons you can get. Because with art, you can really do anything, and you can take people anywhere. That's partly why this is called the wonders of doodling. I, uh, I got in touch. We were, I've been thinking about this for a little bit and what I was going to do here. And my art is very detailed. You can check it out on artofdino.com. But so in order to do something that could fit into a, a couple two-hour things, I had to do something really small. So I did a six by six kind of mandala, which is another specialty, something else we'll go into. And um, I'm gonna show you how I go from this point over here, from an idea to coloring it. And I drew a bunch of different symbols amidst this drawing, things that we can talk about, and um, a bunch of different avenues of thought will probably go down. And so the disclaimer I would like to say is that in an, being an artist, being a very free form artist, loving art, loving imagination, I was born bred with a great imagination. They came out of the 80s, all kinds of great music, all kinds of great movies, all kinds of amazing animation in the 80s inspired me to kind of become what I've, what I've become now. But so I was all, I'm also a teacher. I've been raised by a teacher and an engineer. So my mode of thinking is I've always loved learning. I've always loved the mysteries of the universe, of space of thinking about aliens, thinking about ancient cultures. I've always loved that stuff. And I, have a very, I, I read a lot, I love a lot of ancient texts, ancient cultures, and so I've, I've, got a lot, I've acquired a lot of knowledge in a lot of different areas of thought. And so I incorporated a bunch into this. And uh, one thing I will say is though, that I, I, I believe a lot of the ancients a lot of times. I have a different interesting way of thought, and it all goes into this, and uh, we're gonna get to it. So I'm gonna start coloring this, because we gotta get this done in two hours. So the first step that I have is the pencil which I already sketched out. And so the first, sometimes I like to start symbolically. And one of the avenues that I'll go is to start with something kind of big or either sometimes start with a brain coral. And so on this part, I think I'd like to start with the outer shell of this circle. And I wasn't sure what color to go into, but I think I'm gonna go with yellow for it. So this is kind of the way that I end up doing these things. I take it from a pencil sketch which I used to not even do. I used to just kind of go for it. But I'll take it from a pencil sketch, and pretty soon it'll be a very colorful thing. So a lot of times, I will uh, black outline a lot of parts, so it, it ends up looking, some parts end up being like a coloring book. But um, at other times, it'll just, I'll end up doing colors, because color will be more important than putting a bold black line. Because once you put a bold black line, it is, that is, it is there and it is bold. That's why I partially erased erase some of the pencil over on this circle so that it's a little thinner and it doesn't, um, it doesn't bleed through. But a lot of times the pen will cover the ink and no one will ever be able to notice and it's a good kind of tracing method. Also, in the drawing, I included a lot of spots that I can kind of free explore on, like the space around this alien, even what the alien might look like. There's a lot of different things that we'll leave up to time and we'll see what ends up happening here. But starting with the outside circle that encompasses this little world, this little doodle world, is, a, um, is the way to go here. And I wanted to make it yellow so that it's kind of thin. It's almost like a golden orb or like an egg of some sort. If I had made it a dark color like black, then it would have really cut off everything from the outside world and as we see the meaning of this drawing kind of unravel and unfold, um, you'll see that it's, I think it's better that it's a uh, yellow outline and that the, the realms will blend together. Plus, I can also add a little bit of shading on the outside and it'll look like it's glowing a little bit, especially in contrast. So one of the things that um, I'm talking about, it might sound like nonsense to some people, is that I, I'm planning a lot of, one of the main ingredients of how I do this is I'm seeing it in my head. So I uh, will project colors. That is an unbelievable 
uh, unbelievably important kind of method in the drawing process. And it's, it saves you so much time if you can think about and imagine what color goes where. And um, you, got, you begin to plot it out. Maybe it might be the engineer part of me that I, uh, of my dad, but um, that is kind of the way to do it. It's almost like figuring out an algorithm to best f complete the drawing. And so in this one, my task is in two hours. <laughs> so I want to uh, make sure I do it as best I can. So I'm going to pick some of the main topics first and kind of uh, highlight them. So that one of the main things I see that I want to also do is this diamond in the middle. So one of the main uh, kind of objections of this drawing, or the points I was trying to get with this drawing, is almost like the path of an artist. And I was thinking about it from my perspective and from uh, a lot of the artists that I've encountered. And uh, mainly since it's my drawing, from my perspective is what the ideas have emerged from. But um, there's a lot of different things that can be said. Every artist has a unique path and has a unique creative uh, way of being and a creative way of thinking. And it's, uh, it's very important to uh, acknowledge that all artists really kind of look at the world in a unique way and it's a beautiful thing. And so uh, this, kinda, this drawing has like the jewel in the center, this diamond, and the guy ab above here with the two birds of peace kind of floating about him is kind of illustrating um, almost uh, you know, my vision for being a successful artist, being kind of having the, having the, being on top of the gem of creativity in the middle, in the center of your own universe a little bit without having a, an ego involved, just kind of, you know, knowing that you are alive in a magical, kind of, in a magical way. The world around us is so beautiful, so many mysteries, and um, it's great to, I, I feel honored that as the artist can do. And a lot of people can't, don't, don't, can't find the time to draw art or don't feel like they can draw. So many people come up to me and say, oh, I can only draw stick figures or something. But, you know, every, everybody has the ability to draw, and you just have to find time to do it. Like the, uh, and you have to really want to do it. I, uh, this, I've come to a time now where I would so much rather be drawing all night than going out, to a, uh, going out and having fun or spending a lot of money doing doing other things that you can do out there. I think it's a lot more rewarding to get creative and have a magical uh, time and end up having something at the end of your night that it was never created before. So it's, it's pretty cool and it's a pretty good power uh, as an artist. So with this diamond, I'm kind of coloring the outline of a dark blue. And this will be one of our prime examples of uh, how I can kind of tweak things from the original pencil. So I'll, I'll get into a little bit of shading. I've got a lot of tools here. I've got microns for the really small stuff. These are, these are like needles. That I can, I'll still never forget the day that I met these. It took me, unfortunately, till, high, uh, till college, but I took an intro, to college, an intro to art class, and we had to buy these pens, and I, it was the best thing. I, I, I'll never forget meeting these pens. <laughs> it changed. I used to use uh, hotel pens a lot, and this really, uh, changed my world when I discovered these guys. So here I'm adding, a, these ones are a little bit, um, they're kind of alcohol based, they're a little bit lighter. So I'm adding um, some just kind of light shading to the crystal, making it a little, making it pop. And you'll also end up seeing as time goes on with this drawing that um, there's a lot of layers. I'll end up putting a lot of different layers on here. And like you just saw with this, I have a lot of markers that are in different stages of life. It's very important to never count a marker out and never really get rid of it because like this one is really bold, yet it's the same color as this one right here, which is really light. And so sometimes you need, sometimes you want to go a little lighter, sometimes you want to go a little darker. It's really, um, it's really interesting when you get to know the lifespans of your Sharpie because they, uh, they make you never really feel like you're, um, you know, until the ink completely stops or the tip is broken, they, uh, they will work and they'll give you something good. This one is just a random pen, but it, uh, it's got a good light color. It'll come out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we'll keep going here, maybe a little brighter towards the top. 
get some different, there we go, a little darker on that part. Shadows. See, I always kind of, there's certain times when um, shadows and realism and stuff is, is a little more necessary. And then there's some times when it's not so necessary. And this is one of those times. So we're going to, uh, I'm just going to kind of use some different techniques. But blending is a very important thing. A lot of people ask me, how, how do I blend with uh, Sharpies? And it's really, it's really easy. You just, I mean, you just do it. Sometimes it takes more force than others. But... Um, Certain colors blend perfectly. If you get a uh, pack, you can, you can really do the rainbow with, um, just by connecting like, like colors next to each other and pu pulling them in before they get a chance to dry. And the yellow is the most important color because it really uh, it can pull a lot together. So like down here by this tree, pull that crystal down there. And so the crystal is blue, diamondy at the top, almost emeraldy at the bottom. That's the power of uh, the art crystal and the art creativity. You really you can make this thing anything I want. And this is all just doodling, all very uh, simple, non-toxic materials that any kid, anyone, any age can do. So nobody has an excuse to say they're a bad artist. It just means you haven't dedicated enough time to it. And, um, and a lot of people, some people don't. A lot of people would consider it torture. To uh, stay home, to to be home all weekend and drawing thirty plus hours, but then that's that's why I guess artists are a little bit different sometimes, in a good way, which is great. But so with this drawing, we're going to go into a lot of different uh, areas of thinking, and um, I'm going to show you all my techniques, and uh, tell you some tricks and maybe some different stories. So this could be a very interesting couple hours and uh, all right so now we have the crystal I might do the guy on top although I might wait for him and I'm gonna leave that middle spot in the crystal open because I um, we might put something else there that's another thing you always want to there's certain areas that I'm gonna go over mostly in this first uh, episode the areas that are really just easy and don't require too much thought. And, um, and then I'll, after, as time goes on, I'll go into honing it down. And then you'll see towards the end that there's always, which is actually my favorite time of the drawing, is when all the imagery is colored. Everything is colored. Everything will be full. And then all I have to do, I spend another day or several hours just going over the... Um, going over the outline and looking for all different just pixels, little dots that, don't, that might be out of place or colors that aren't completely filled in or something. And it's, that's really fun because all the thinking for the most part is done. You just have to go around, have to comb the drawing and just look for uh, little things to fix and make better. And, it, and as, the, as you'll see that as it happens, the drawing really just continues to pop out in really interesting ways. And you never really know what'll happen. And, that's when it starts, it becomes like a, uh, a treasure. But a lot of people, when they do their doodling, will just take it to the surface layer and they'll get kind of colors. And you'll see, I'll have a surface layer at one point. I sometimes go beyond it in little intricate spots, but the surface layer will be very, um, like, you know, it's just a light, light layer of color. It's not, and, you know, there's always white little dots. You can still see the paper. That's kind of the surface layer. When you, when you take it to the next level is when it really starts to, to look like a thing. And, and a lot of fine art um, people, you know, they only consider like oils and different things to be fine art, but uh, I, don't know, I tend to differ. I think if, if any fine art should be really fine, detailed, really meticulous, really, um, you know, powerful. And these archival inks will last forever for the most part. You keep them out of sun, so they, um, why not have fine art in, that's ink? I, I believe it should. It's just as vibrant, just as beautiful. So this tree I'm making very orange and kind of, um, I'm going to probably go over and do the, uh, add a little brown after, but layers is a very important thing, whether you're painting or drawing or graphic designing or really doing anything, scrapbooking. I, uh, so many things require, f require layering and thinking in layers. And so with this orange, I'm thinking I'll, I'm going to go do some brown after and uh, make it look a little more like a tree, but to have the orange kind of glow at the bottom is good. Because this tree, if you've noticed, has five uh, roots, five different uh, branches coming off of it. Part of the reason why I did that is because of the hand. 
the artist hand is very important with five, uh, five fingers that are essential to art, although yeah, yeah, every single finger is necessary. And um, the hand is very important. A lot of artists will draw their hands. A lot of artists say it's very tough to draw hands, and it, and it, it definitely is. But their hands are very important. You have to always protect their hands if you're an artist. I've <clears throat> One of my fears is always just hurting my right hand. But strong. Plays guitar as well. It's very important to be creative. That's kind of how I came to discover art, was I just really started creatively. And then uh, being creative, I wrote up stories when I was young. I built things with my dad. And then I... Um, Picked up art pretty much the whole, uh, I always had art the whole time. And I had a, d a period of time with my, with my friend when I was younger when we would just trace the most detailed, small things as possible. We actually competed for who could trace the smallest, most detailed things uh, with tracing paper. And it, um, I, think that's, I think that partly led to, to what I've ended up becoming. But um, so down, down here, Outside of the, uh, this little orb, we'll probably call it a bunch of different things, the sphere. But so the roots are going down. And this is kind of in a, a, a totally different world. So within this circle is the uh, kind of one bit of sphere. It's down here. I'll have to get, let me get this guy down. But there's a, a little guy down here by this tree. And this is kind of my representation of the starting artist. As you start down here, kind of at the bottom of the sphere, you, uh, you're, just, you're just getting to know the world of art, the world of creativity, and, and you're starting to, you know, maybe you've had a good fondness for nature, and there's been all kinds of signs leading you to art or something. You think a lot, you read a lot. Um, I really think everyone's capable of creating their own unique art, but this guy down here kind of represents that, the starting artist. He's outside, he's sketching, he's taking in nature. He's, um, or she is, um, really just kind of soaking it in. And then uh, let me color him in a second. I usually color the guys, uh, or the people of my world, um, black or dark colors, like mostly. That's kind of their, the, the, uh, kind of just like a stick figure. I, I put, they've come throughout my drawings since I was in middle school. They've been in my, in my notebooks. You can find these little guys. So, and they still go in my drawings today. And just, I feel like every, I've drawn probably millions of them and they're, they're all totally different in some kind of crazy way which is a whole nother interesting thing in the art world. But so I'm going to draw this guy down here really small. We'll make him kind of lean up against a tree. I want to put him a circle in his hand because he likes mandalas too. So maybe he's drawing mandala. Put a little pen there. And then get him sitting. Put his other legs on the other side. You can get really detailed. They just, I just discovered these .003 pens, and they are just a mir miracle. They go so detailed, and they come out so great. So this person leaning against the tree and getting his drawing, her, her drawing started. And then on the other side, this is still kind of symbolic of the artist about to take flight. I did a giant kind of swan-like bird, which uh, a lot of things can be symbolic. Animals are very symbolic, and they have been through, through all native cultures of, I mean, from Tibet to the Native Americans and beyond. Everyone throughout the history of time has observed animals and attributed symbols to them, like symbols that show kind of or express what these animals, uh, what these animals do and think and how they hunt or how they live or how they are mothers or kind or sneaky or cunning. Or every kind of animal has its own uh, different symbolism to it. And so this guy is kind of a tall bird preparing. He's not really a total flight bird, but he's, uh, he's preparing for flight, kind of like the artist who's starting off on the journey, getting ready for an experience that, you know, when, if you were to tell me when I first started doodling that I'd be doing certain things like this or some of the things that art has taken me to do, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have ever really believed it. So... But it's really great, and it's not about money. It's really all about all kinds of awesome things, and um, all the different areas of thought, the different people you meet. It uh, it can take you really far, your creative mind, and you can meet a lot of people, and it's a great path. All right, so the bird and the guy, they are there now. We're just you can just see I'm just kind of taking in some random little details. 
do this from time to time, but let's keep going. We'll get bigger. Let's do this water up here by the crystal. So we're going to make, uh, let's see this. Some of my pens are a little hurting. This one is uh, not up to full strength, but let's replace it with this one. All right. Yeah, so now I'm going to do the water, and so this is kind of um, this is kind of like an inner landscape within the um, within this little world here, and so this is a, kind of like a reservoir of water. the uh, The subconscious is a huge, it uh, plays a huge role in in being an artist, whether you realize it or not. I guess that's pretty much the point of it. But um, Carl Jung it was a big influence of mine, and he really delved into the subconscious, and he believe that, uh, or just symbol, a lot of people throughout time have actually symbolized kind of oceans and water, bodies of water as being uh, kind of reservoirs of the collective subconscious and symbolic of uh, subconscious thought. And anyone that's ever, um, I personally feel that I'm the most creative thinking on, uh, personally when I'm near water. Even That's why a lot of people have shower ideas because they're, they're in the shower and running water kind of or people have little mini waterfalls on their desks. I, I, there's some kind of power in water, and it, um, it's got whether it's got a memory or it reacts to you know we're all made of water. It's just a very important thing, and it's representation of the subconscious mind, and that's importance to art is is very uh, is very critical. A lot of times you'll do things in art, and um, I mean even you could maybe attribute some splashes, abstract chaotic splashes, to being uh, subconscious. Yep. Oh, but, uh, but you never know. The, the, uh, there's a lot to think about. Dreams are also a very important part. But uh, let's see. So for this water, I'm starting off up at the top. I'm doing it a little darker blue because that's going to kind of be more in the distance. I'm doing some finer kind of um, pen, pen strokes because it... Uh, it allows me to kind of, it ends up looking like water, and sometimes this is good to keep some of the white. We'll never know how it'll become because uh, I tend to go over things a lot until I, uh, until I feel they're complete, but we'll see how this will come out. But I can envision this, so I'm going to start off darker at the top, and then I'm going to bring, bring a couple other colors down. And actually, this is a good one. Nope, not that one. This one, oh, not that one. Sharpie has a good, uh, they make a nice neon color. Neon blue is really, really good. Sharpie occasionally, you, when, you're, when you collect pens, you can, uh, or when you start being a pen kind of artist, you see like, you'll see pens anywhere. You never know where you'll find one that really works, but you um, always be on the lookout for ones that, that work for you and work the best. Then the, the one drawback with these neon ones though is that there's a neon orange in here that can't get picked up by the, the computer scanners. So it, um, it's kind of interesting, it's like a highlighter but um, you got to be aware of that because I sometimes love that color, but I don't want to use too much because it doesn't, it can't be captured. So all these different areas of thought that go into everything and my subconscious and just kind of free form mind is going to just uh, kind of keep going here. So we got these waters. I'm getting it lower. I'm saving some spot. Those little spaces in between are for the dolphins. One is, um, one's actually more of a shark and one is more of like a happy dolphin looking up. And this is kind of, uh, duality is another very important aspect of, I guess, being an artist or uh, being a human in, in today's world, because we are constantly kind of bombarded with a, a little kind of good or evil, yin and yang type of, type of atmosphere, and um, the artist is always torn with that too. Like, one has to know whether to follow the path that everyone, uh, that a lot of other people do, or to uh, take a risk and, and, and do what you really kind of love. Because in the art world, a lot of people will tell you that you can't do it, you can't succeed, you need another thing. And uh, just the people, a lot of times, don't encourage you as much as you'd like. And so that's kind of the, the yang side of that. But uh, you know, other times, you'll meet people that will encourage you to the fullest. And, uh, and then some. You'll meet people that like your art so much that they, it brings them to tears or it like, reminds them of a, uh, of a, a lost relative or, or a friend. And, and that, that's really priceless. There's nobody, uh, very few people 
outside of artists well, can understand the value in uh, making someone's day and potentially life that much, uh, that much brighter, even if there's not even a penny attached to it. It's a very, uh, very good feeling. And uh, God bless it. It keeps, it keeps everything going. It keeps the need for art alive always. So, but there are good and bad. It is, a, it is a tough road, but it is worth it. It is fun. It is, it is great. So I've got a little, right here, I'm kind of going over the, uh, the outline. Sometimes I pull a little bit of the black in, whether it's intentional or accident. The one thing, uh, Sharpies tend to smudge. They, they, they are a little bit uh, relentless about, um, you know, you got to be very precise if you don't want a color to go into a certain zone. But then if you do, you get you gotta kind of also be on that as well, but I'm doing pretty good. This is a thick kind of brush here, but I'm a thick point, but it's it's working pretty good here. And again, this is still kind of like an intro layer to this. Like we can go over uh, go over it with a little bit of white later to make waves or some darker gradients, or I'll fill in all the all the little spots. But this is kind of how it, a drawing gets taken down. Sometimes I almost become like a, uh, a printer when there's certain parts that are really um, just it's kind of nuts. But the better you, the, the, another thing is the more you draw, the better, the more you just, the more you can get in the zone and the easier it is to get in the zone, which is very important because once you're in the zone, you can really, uh, you can really do anything. And I call it the zone because it really kind of makes you tune out anything that's, that's going on in, uh, in the outside uh, world or really anywhere. It could be snowing, hurricaning, you could have a, a tough situation in life or, or anything. But when you're drawing and you get in the zone, it, it pretty much all dissolves and you, uh, you can just really get creative. And it's, it's the best. I love it. So we'll actually, let's see. Might need a slightly, yeah, we'll do this. So I'm really taking the water down in different layers. Uh, I wish this one was a little bit more alive. I might have to come up with an alternate method for that. But yeah, some of my pens are, uh, have been going. I just took a, like I said, I just drew a uh, tropical drawing that really ate a lot of my blue up. But I'm going to make this work over here. We're going to bring this down. So at the top, if you can see, it's like a kind of a distant horizon, and then it's coming all the way back. As it gets lighter, it's going to go to the shoreline over here where these guys are hanging out. And then on the side, I've got some coral, some seaweed. We'll get to that. And this is still kind of all the beginner artist part of the uh, thing. The triumphant artist is up top here, and then the supreme at the very top, which is kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of different cultures and a lot of different beliefs as to what like the ultimate uh, kind of purpose of, of, of life is and no one really no one will ever really know but a lot of ancients believed in nirvana and you know attaining like kind of liberation from from whatever uh, kind of our cycle of rebirth and whatever the, their particular belief and kind of I, I tend to uh, sometimes represent try to represent those things that really cannot be represented but can be with art and um, so I sometimes symbolize that by the guy in a, in a kind of a Buddha lotus position and he's outside the circle, outside the realm, kind of in the realm of gods and different kind of imaginary things, if they are imaginary. And that's one thing that uh, is very interesting. When you're an artist, I feel it's very important to never totally settle on a... Uh, if, if something is a theory, I think it's very important to retain always retain the, the fact that something is a theory because I think a lot of people get it get believe something that that is a theory and they believe it so wholeheartedly that they they completely phase out any other possibility of of a reality and, and you know when you're thinking about something like the structure of the universe or something just these massive things what's beyond life like you you, you really nobody knows the answers everything is theory so they, really we're all in the same ballpark and uh, once you realize that, and I think it's, I think a lot more possibilities open up. And so, as an artist, I've, um, in my, and I've been very fortunate to have my parents who really like traveling. They, um, I've been, I've been all over. I actually toured Europe with my my band, and 
but I've been seeing native cultures of South America and a bunch of different, really, like the, uh, Venice, all kinds of native cultures there. And I was always just kind of fascinated by the mysteries that they present and how those people, like, like the people envision such things like Michelangelo, you know, these gods, these angels, you know, maybe they, it, it's, I, it, in my reality of, of free thinking, you know, may, maybe these things, uh, you know, they, they could have been more real than, than we've been taught. So I think it's always good to kind of imagine, envision certain things and never really close your mind to uh, certain theories and realities that might not be totally true. So that's kind of where a lot of this drawing will come from, because we, as we get outside the sphere of kind of earthly things, there's the magical realm where the, the aliens, were, whether they're from another planet or a distant part of this one, is, you know, they're a mystery, they're a great mystery to everyone. Those lights in the sky, they could be any, they could be fireworks, they could be, any, who knows? But um, they, uh, it's, all, it's all fun to th think about, it's all fun to talk about. I personally would love, we talk about all these things forever and not talk about sports or <laughs> anything like that for, for a second and I'd be very happy. So these thoughts are, uh, you know, when you're doodling too, you, your mind, when you're drawing, when you're in the zone, a lot of artists, no matter what you're drawing, you'll notice that your mind kind of goes off onto different, uh, different paths and some of those paths are useless and some of those paths are funny and some of those paths are just, uh, just plain fun or random. And so we're done with the water around here for now. My goal is to just take down as much, and I've got to work pretty quick. So this around the outside of this water, one of the ideas I had was to kind of make little lotus petals. So I've got uh, the lotus is a very important symbol for kind of rising above, uh, like rising above kind of dirtiness, rising above, uh, rising out of a swamp, and just being a, a, an object of pure beauty that with an immaculate pattern and um, all kinds of different things. So I wanted the first layer of shore to kind of be a lotus just because it's, a, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a magical thought, kind of a magical idea. And again, with art, you can do anything you want. So that is the way to do it. So I'm going to make these kind of these pink lotuses. And uh, this, again, this is one of those neon colors that's really, uh, really very cool. This one actually does come out in scanners. And uh, very bright, very nice color. And so a lot, of, um, a lot of ancient Buddhist Tibetan mandalas, you'd see the deities and the, uh, the gods on lotus flowers, on lotus thrones. And uh, they're, very, they're very important. They're very, very, very symbolic and very ancient. And that's... And that's the thing that people, uh, people nowadays tend to forget, is that all these ancient cultures really, uh, they really thought a lot more magically of the universe than, than we do. And they were coming up with these creative visions and these thoughts on, on everything. The Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Tibetan, uh, the, uh, there's, a, there's a book about the lotus of, um, the, I forget what it's called, the sacred, uh, the sacred lotus, uh, something, a really great book, I, I forget what it is. It'll probably hit me later on. But Carl Jung actually did the intro for it, and it's, uh, it's very good. So here, I'll take that. I'll leave a little bit of white on this lotus because it kind of, um, I can use it to my advantage. I have a white pen. It's a, um, I have it somewhere, but I try not to use it. I try to just use the white on the paper if I need it. And then, if, so basically at the end, if there's any white on the paper on the drawing, it's because it was, uh, destined to be that way and, and that's and that's the point of it not because I, I forgot and I, I messed up or I left a spot blank it's always intentional and when you doodle like in this kind of nature in this like detailed fashion too you really get to know every pixel it's a lot different than kind of using a giant brush and uh, covering a huge spot of space in in a very short amount of time it's uh, that's almost impossible here with these details and I, I find actually that with uh, no matter what size brush I use or what size kind of pen I use that pretty much dictates the, the level of detail of my art if I um, even that's why I kind of choose to use ink a lot more than I will paint because 
the uh, with paint, I can never a paintbrush. I can just never get the detail, the level of detail that I can, and the level of control that I can with with these sharpies. Like they're real, you can control every little speck. Every single thing becomes intentional, and it's it's really neat. And you can pack a lot of symbolism in. As we hopefully towards the end, I'll have uh, my goal is to pretty much get a good amount of stuff done here, and then um, I can go towards the end of our uh, little session here. I can kind of go over it and show you the extreme level that the art can be taken to. Because like I said before about the secondary level and like kind of the, the uh, outer level, I forget what word I used, but super kind of like a superficial way to draw it, which kind of leaves a lot of white space and a lot of kind of marks that make it clearly look like it, it's something that was drawn. Or you can take it to a level where it just it, it really looks like it's something like a photograph almost or something printed by something else. Because when you think about it, all photos, all prints, they're all just dots and they're all just pixels of, of really just ink. So, uh, you know, if you can print a, uh, if a computer can, can print it, then you should be able to technically kind of draw it, or I'd like to believe. But um, I choose to draw things that really you can't, can't really think about, or you, I mean, you, that, a, that a computer really couldn't, uh, or a photography couldn't really capture, because it's, uh, I feel like it's uh, important to use the imagination. And um, so now I've, got, I've gone beyond the lotus, and I'm kind of doing this little bubble realm. They're, they're, they're almost like, uh, kind of like a combo of hills with, uh, like distant hills with sand dune kind of symbols. And there, again, I'm not going like super detailed into like the, the uh, sand duny and hillish kind of things, but you could always, um, if I wanted to take this even further, I could make little people kind of traveling on there, little animals, little huts, little different things. So, you can always take things to another level in art, which is great. As far it's up to you to really kind of become it. You become it. It's the artwork's creator, and that's that's quite a responsibility and an awesome honor. And this drawing, in order to sketch it, took me about an hour and a half in pencil at the gallery at Patriot's Place. You should go. <laughs> but uh, I just drew that there. That way we didn't have to waste any time today. We could just get into the good stuff. And so these hills, again, I'm using this yellow to smudge. There's a little kind of pencil in there, there but I'd say, so I do take a little bit of orange and, you, and it's good to get it while it's wet because it will, it, it, it is a permanent marker, but it still, takes a, it still takes a little bit of time to dry. So you can always pull stuff over with the yellow. And there's, a, there's blending markers that sometimes work too, and um, those are pretty good. And you can find different methods of blending, but I, I like the yellow. It gives it a kind of cool glow. And really, every color can be used to blend. You just have to kind of use it. And there's a, little, there's a little kind of blemish, a little dot. That's one thing that's always kind of a risk with ink is sometimes the, uh, the felt on the edge of the um, tip will kind of will break off or something. And you'll end up with a tiny, like my, almost microscopic piece of of uh, ink, basically, and pen on your on your drawing, and then trying to get it off, you have to be very careful because it can uh, just leave a mark. Like the other day, I was pretty much done with my drawing. <laughs> this is actually kind of ridiculous. I was done with my Florida drawing, and a little black dot came on it, and pretty much you can't see it, but there's one there now, but which is just dust. But it was ink, and I was like, oh, and I was trying to get it away, and I ended up making a streak across my sky, and it like it took me an hour to fix it. And it was, it was very, it was kind of annoying, but it was just one little, I take such good care of my uh, drawings to not have anything happen, no creases. I treat every drawing kind of like it's a masterpiece and like it's, uh, like it's uh, kind of uh, sacred. And, um, and to get to have this happen right at the end of the drawing, uh, at the end of a really, <laughs> it was just, it was nuts. So beware of those little tiny dots, that, those little pieces of pen that can, can end up ruining a, uh, Learning something, although it did get fixed, and you wouldn't, no one could even tell except me. But um, it's always you always got to be careful because sometimes with ink, you uh, you can't always go over it like you can with pen. I mean, with uh, paint, you really um, 
you have to kind of be as precise as you, as, as you can. So I'm just touching up the diamond. From time to time, I'll just see different things that will need to be touched up. So now we got that sand dunes. I wanted to go beyond that. I wanted to make this next one. So I do a lot of gradients. I go from one color to the next in kind of, uh, in kind of smooth ways and um, sometimes symbolic ways too, but mostly just kind of colorful, smooth ways. This one happens to be a little bit of both because these are going from kind of sand dunes and then the next round is going to be a light green and so it will turn into a kind of hills from there. And then after that, we'll have his little fortress where the guy is. All right, green. Although the green ended up being near the pyramids, that's okay because it's our vision and it looks pretty cool with the color. Mm. And I also included pyramids in here because they're a very, uh, very dominant kind of ancient, ancient shape. And, um, you know, we still really, I don't think, know what those, what those really were. And there's pyramids all over the world, all different cultures. They're just like, it's, they're just a very symbolic thing. Even on our dollar, there's, there's pyramids. They're everywhere. But... Uh, let me actually cut those in. Uh, use a little orange for them. Maybe that. And then, um, so I've got all different kind of shades of colors, which is very important. The, um, and it's also, I, and I, 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 more drawings than others, I will take, take note to where the sun and moonlight and stuff are coming from. This one, I'm, I, I will a little bit but not too, uh, not going to put too much emphasis on that. But I might, but we'll see. So these, um, these hills, I'm going to kind of outline them with a darker green. Maybe they'll show kind of the fur of Nile. It really, um, it really, everything becomes kind of symbolic after, <laughs> after a certain time. Like different colors really have different, you know, meanings like, uh, Red is a, kind of more passionate than like a dull kind of color, or pink is a little bit lighter. Or, there's all kinds of different, uh, there's just different ways of looking at everything and different patterns and different ways to include math into your art with, by using different patterns. And it's really so infinite. Like this, like the golden ratio is one that I will get into, the spiral that uh, is a very important shape in, in drawing, sacred geometry, all kinds of different um, sacred geometric shapes are all very important. They're everywhere. We are based on them and they're, they're very fascinating. It's a very good, I think it's a very good way to teach the youth about geometry is by using art and sacred geometry. I think that is very key because they look, it looks really awesome and kids are really fascinated by what looks really cool, I think. And so these pyramids, I'm kind of adding a little bit of shade to them. Or this one, this side, did that a little backwards, but that's okay. The sun's on this side. And again, we're gonna. I'll go over all these. I'll probably outline a lot of it with uh, with black towards the end, and uh, it's gonna just kind of keep popping out. But before I get to the uh, structure of him, let's go to this tree down here and maybe complete this tree. So now when it comes to the leaves, I left the leaves a little blank because I can either do it. There's so many different patterns of leaves. And um, I've drawn, I happen to have drawn a lot of animals, a lot of plants, a lot of leaves and different things. And so and I love nature. I love going in nature hikes. So I, I really always am looking at the patterns of leaves and the patterns of the way trees grow and, um, and, and the structure of the layers of the colors of trees. I recommend that for anyone too. Anyone that wants free art lessons, go to the woods and look around at all the nature, all the, the patterns, like look at the patterns on mushrooms, on flowers, on bark, on fallen trees, different old trees, decaying wood. It's, it's just so much to look at in the woods. I, I try to get out there at least two, three times a week, hopefully more when it's warmer. But it's, it's very important to, a, to an artist, I feel, is to notice all those patterns. And a lot of them are based on the on sacred geometry and the golden ratio are different just uh, kind of crazy things that penetrate our, our, our world and exist all over the place and are, are worth checking out, worth researching and worth learning about. So now we've got the leaves. I think with these ones I'm probably just going to do uh, a couple different techniques here. I might just do kind of simple 
simple leaves of different colors and then outline them after. And so I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to start with a lighter kind of green and I'm going to make some, the first round of leaves. And I'm making them kind of big, little bold, little marks because I'll uh, end up outlining them and make them look a little more like leaves. This is, uh, sometimes I would make uh, things a little more complex or add, I still might add something there, so I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, I might add like wor hidden words or sometimes some the different birds, uh, different people, sometimes crawling through the trees. Like there's all kinds of different possibilities. Every single space, like once you create the structure of your world, it's up to you to really fill it. And there's so many ways to fill these art worlds. So now we got a darker color mixing in. Make some bolder leaves. The um, We'll get these done. We'll start kind of, I'll probably outline them after. And I'll get a little yellow in the background next probably, but I might slide another green in there to fill in some of the gaps. And sometimes it's good to have a little bit of white within trees because if you look at trees and the sun's shining on them, they, they have some bright, some bright edges and all kinds of things. Again, look at, look at nature in all different lights, uh, the before sunset, after sunset, sunrise noon. It takes a different, nature is a great painter and he takes a great, um, I mean just there's so much to see, so much to observe and every single sec second of the day it's another interesting way to experience the world from your perspective and then take it into your art and really I spent, I remember when I first started painting at one point I took a lot of, uh, I would just go into the woods and sit down in front of or just kind of stare at like different trees or different cliff sides or rocky areas and just think about how I would paint it if I had color and what kind of layers would go first, what kind of things would go after, how I would you know, how the cracks form, the shadows. It's just worth it to check it all out. It'll all sink into your head. Your brain can take it all and utilize it whenever you need it most. And uh, when you draw it, it'll come in. It'll come in handy. All right, so let me go at that. I might fill in some things there, so we're going to leave that blank. Again, there'll be a time towards the end when we'll just kind of, hopefully, we'll just kind of go around and, and uh, be able to just add interesting little things to, uh, to the mix here. Making pretty good timing. Uh, I'm going to brush out some stuff. All right. All right. So let's see, let's get, uh, I might start with the, uh, let's do the spiral up here. We're going to get, we're going to just outline this real quick because this is, this is kind of the, uh, you know, the, the Milky Way galaxy-esque spiral of creativity where we we're talking about. And this actually, this spiral actually looks kind of like a spiral, but it's actually concentric rings because there's a very popular illusion that uh, many of you might have seen where if you make concentric, concentric rings of, of kind of certain colors and just of a certain closeness, they end up looking like uh, a spiral, and it's really neat. So this one, we're going to kind of use the rainbow colors, and just going to go around there. We've got about 10 minutes left to this session, so I'm going to kind of rapid fire, uh, see what we can do here, and then um, we'll come back for the next round, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, finish up. So red, use the rainbow. The rainbow comes in handy. It's good to always kind of to sometimes use that. It always looks really cool, and um, it's a good kind of uh, it's a good pattern to follow because it just it's it just kind of it's just so natural, and it uh, appeals to appeals to the eye, and it looks really cool. And when you get a spiral, you never know what color it's going to be. So, <laughs> and there's. Spirals you can see everywhere, from the photos of galaxies to the milk in your coffee, the uh, puddles of oil on the ground sometimes after it rains and if a car is leaking, everywhere. The seashells, plants, hurricanes, coastlines, fractals, computers. There's so many different uh, examples of spirals and different chaos, and it's good to uh, it's good to acknowledge that with your art because sometimes you want to. You want to use that, whereas what I'm doing right now with really fine pens is the exact opposite of chaos. Sometimes you want to utilize chaos, like with watercolor, utilizes it a lot. Um, these alcohol ink things that people have been doing lately, they really 
utilize the art, I mean the uh, chaos. And so uh, there's a good, there's a time for it, and there's a good, um, it has its place, but probably not in this drawing. But here we go, so I'm just kind of doing, this is a different shade of purple, then I might go back to blue. I'm brushing a little bit, but there's normally, yeah, this is, this is why I had to do something so small, is because um, it takes a lot. And a lot of my drawings are really big. Like one of my biggest, I'm working on one now that's gone for over a year, and it's, uh, it's going to be the moment that good triumphs over evil in the world, and it's just a huge, vast landscape. And it's so detailed, so symbolic, and it's it's taken me a, like a year and a, a year and a month so far. But it's um, it's really big, and it's with this amount of detail, if not more so, because of how it's been laid out. But um, so they're great, and the the feeling of completing and working on something, it's kind of like when people. I used to never understand how people could uh, work on a um, like a model boat or something for so long when I was younger, but. I ended up doing things that uh, are even kind of just as comprehensive, and uh, and I understand now like how uh, how great it is to work on something so meticulously for for a long period of time. The end result always ends up being great. The response from people is always very interesting and great, and uh, it's just re really rewarding every time creating an artwork. You never know an artwork can really change. Uh, change the way the world is if it's if it's done right or at the right time a lot of artworks throughout time that have, are still standing the test of time and they're really uh, really remarkable and they'll never get old art well there's always going to be a need for art it's everywhere your clothing your computer everywhere and so spirals illusions are actually uh, kind of they were how I kind of got really into art because I always loved illusions and I love spirals, and I actually love spinning illusions and spinning mandalas. And at the very end, when this is done, I'll, we'll spin it with the, uh, an app I made, and I'll show you. It ends up being pretty cool. And, um, but it's a whole other illusion world, and that's kind of what pulled me in. And so we'll take that spiral to another dimension later. Let's get the moon real quick, maybe. We'll do that in yellow. We'll start, maybe we'll do some of the craters in yellow, and then I'll go over it after. Again, layers and layers. But, so the moon, the sun, that's a good kind of way to close it off. Add some craters on there. Might even shade it. Oh, definitely we'll shade it, actually. We'll, we'll do more of that next time. Then the sun will make a... Uh, let's go red with my red. Yeah. And I, uh, if you notice, I leave. I tend to leave my caps undone. If you're, um, I, if you're in the zone, it's it's sometimes okay. It's, it's, it's basically always okay to really kind of leave your things here because you don't want to kind of be, you don't want to always be capping. But and again, some pens will, like these neon ones, will dry out if not capped. Meanwhile, most of them, 99% of them, will not dry out for for a full art session, even if it's like 10 hours but uh, as long as I keep kind of using them. So if, if, if you're getting distracted by constantly ca capping them, because sometimes people can lose focus, you want to always preserve your focus. But if that's one of the things that makes you lose focus sometimes capping, then just leave them uncapped and they'll be, they'll be fine. And then cap them when you're done. And uh, this design here in the sun, this is going to be the closing design for this session is based on the flower of life. It's kind of, it's, I think this version is referred to as like the seed of life or a variation of the seed of life. But it's a very, another a very ancient symbol. And when this symbol is, this, this pattern and this uh, symbol is taken to another level, it forms kind of a, uh, a circular shape that has uh, triangles actually form within it. So it's very neat. And um, it's, it's very common. You'll see it a lot in different artworks. And so I'm kind of going over... That part, everything connects to the center. The center is a very important uh, aspect of a mandala and of really of any artwork. You always want the center to kind of be something important. And so we are going to, with this sun, ah, all right. We will take, we will pick up again in the next session 
and uh, we're going to take this a little bit. Uh, we're going to take this further. We'll see how far we can get it. And um, we've still got a good ways to go. This is going to have to be filled in. I'm going to have to work quick, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. And uh, I think we can do it. And maybe we'll check it. And there's a certain lighting too that you can hold these kind of neon drawings up to, and it really changes the spectrum light. And so maybe I'll see if we can figure out a way to check that out too. I've had a lot of fun doing this. We're going to get into some good stuff next. And uh, we're going to finish this doodle and explore more about the wonders of doodling with Dino. So thank you so much.